First of all, I'd like to say how impressed we are at the splendid renditions of the police band led by Inspector Daniel Hall. Congratulations. I want also to say how pleased we are at the excellence of the parade, the members of the parade ground and led by the commandant. Thank you very much. I am also overwhelmed by the very large turnout of the citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines today. I am particularly pleased to see the massive presence of the young people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Independence is for all of us, but it is very much for the young of the nation. It is said poetically that though it is wonderful to be alive, it is heavenly to be young. And today, the 37th anniversary of our nation's independence, this day, this beautiful day, is a day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Over the past 37 years, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has made significant socio-economic and technological progress. Despite its small geographic and population size, its relative scarcity of material resources, its extremely challenging external economic and political environment and its vulnerability to natural disasters. Yet, even though we have seen all this progress, much still remains to be done to improve the quality of our lives and living conditions. I thus strongly urge that we renew today our commitment to the ongoing quest to lift our country further and higher in the interests of all of us. Our nation's progress, enhanced prosperity, peace, and socio-political stability have been achieved largely through our own efforts at home in concert with the considerable assistance of our diaspora, friendly nations abroad, and supportive institutions and peoples regionally and globally, and through the abiding grace and beneficence of a loving God. This combination of a many-sided human effort and divine inspiration ensures our continued upliftment today and beyond. Morning by morning, new mercies we see and receive bountifully. And all that we need, His divine hand has been provided. Great is His faithfulness, for which we are truly thankful as a nation. We are sincerely grateful to, to everyone of all walks of life, at home and abroad, Vincentians and non-Vincentians alike, for the contributions, great and small, which have been made and are being made to our people's upliftment. 
Our gratitude is immense. It is heartfelt. And we must proclaim it aloud collectively and in the quiet certitude of our individual beings. We must always be willing to say thanks to Almighty God and thanks to all of our people who have contributed so much to the building of our country. Thanks very much. It is right and proper that as we acknowledge our nation's socio-economic and technological advances, we must recognize too and lament our individual and collective shortcomings and fall from grace and be accordingly contrite and recommit ourselves to do what is better and right. As always, change for the better has to come and start with each of us. We do good, but we can do better. And as the saying goes, every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. Undoubtedly, we are pained and anguished at the blight of violence crime perpetrated largely through the use and misuse of guns and bullets by a small group of young men. This affects not only the victims and their families, but all of us in this small geographic space called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Clearly, the solution to criminal violence is not a matter only for the government and the police force. All hands must be on deck, including centrally all the institutions of the state, the family, the schools, the churches, the media, the political parties, the non-governmental groups and the communities themselves. Still, even amidst the dangers of criminal violence, our country remains safe. And citizen security, though challenged, is sound. Overwhelmingly, our people of all ages, sex and social condition are law-abiding, peaceful and good-natured and the violent criminals are given no supportive space in our communities save and except from a few criminally connected persons my government is determined to root out the small pockets of the criminally minded in our midst the criminally violent we are all together in this Fellow Vincentians, less than one year ago in December 2015, the Unity Labour Party was returned to government in free and fair elections for its fourth consecutive term. Since then, our government has been very focused in carrying out its mandate, particularly in respect of job and wealth creation the reduction of poverty and inequality, furthering the, revitaliz re the revitalization of agriculture and fisheries and industry, the consolidation and expansion of the education, health and housing revolutions, the near completion of the construction of the Argyle International Airport, the ongoing preparatory work for port development and the city at Arnesville, the geothermal project and other renewable energy initiatives, the repair and building of bridges and roads, the construction of sea and river defenses, the tourism projects at Beckwick, Canoan, Myro, Union Island, and Mount Twin Peters Hope, the expansion of telecommunications, fiscal, financial, and monetary stability, and low inflation, the pursuit of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, including the battle against harmful climate change, the improvement of citizen security, and the further strengthening of good governance, democracy, freedom, 
justice and regionalism. Be assured, our dear citizens, that the commencement of operations of the Argyle International Airport is imminent. A formal announcement and this will shortly be made. Dear citizens, our government is implementing its mandate in a complicated and challenging external economic and political environment. Progress amidst these complications, contradictions and challenges often creates a condition for small island developing states like ours that is akin to going up the dung escalator. In the process of navigating these problems and forging credible solutions, our government also has had to resist, rebuke and correct wrong, even dangerous ideas and unsung doctrine advocated by some misguided persons who have been turning their ears away from truth and who have been engendering falsehoods and opportunistic mountings on vital public policies merely to suit their own selfish agendas. In its rebuttal of damaging, bogus ideas and doctrines at home and abroad, our government takes comfort from the compelling advice tendered by His Holiness Pope Francis in his apostolic exhortation, The Joy of the Gospel, in which he writes, quote, Some people continue to defend trickle-down theories which assume that economic growth encouraged by a free market will inevitably succeed in bringing about greater justice and inclusiveness in the world. This opinion, which has never been confirmed by the facts, expresses a crude and naive trust in the goodness of those wielding economic power and in the sacralized workings of the prevailing economic system. Meanwhile, the excluded are still waiting." Unquote. It is for that and other reasons that we continue in our government to put people at the center of our socio-economic policies, especially as we seek to build a harmonious and just economic system conjointly to the private, cooperative and state sectors. In this way, we can achieve our goal to construct a modern, competitive post-colonial economy which is at once national, regional and global in our people's interest. I want to appeal yet again to all public and private sector employees, managers and leaders to lift our productivity and delivery of service. Although the bulk of our people are focused and disciplined at their workplaces, there is still a minority among us who are insufficiently productive. I urge them to do better in their own interests and that of the country as a whole. Everyone has to make a worthwhile contribution. I'm appealing yet again also to our domestic private sector to take full advantage of the economic and business opportunities which are available. I reiterate yet again that my government is ever ready to facilitate entrepreneurs in establishing or expanding their businesses. My government has been doing this over the years for entrepreneurs in every economic sector and we want to do even more. I want to make sure that we do not just have excuses but the opportunities are taken which are available. For example, in the area of hotel development, I have repeatedly stressed to potential local investors that the state has available land 
for tourism development. Let us partner together on bankable ventures in this sector, among others. Let us together create more jobs and wealth for our people. I urge our students and young persons to prepare themselves well for the future while they enjoy their youthful pursuits in sports, culture, and recreation. Without a sound education and training, the future of the young would be less assured. I beg you to take advantage of the abundant opportunities currently available for education and training. Please seek out proper information advice and advice on your career path and put in maximum effort in your endeavors. The future belongs to you. Do not waste your life. And please help your colleagues to see the light if they are not as yet sufficiently focused as you are. I say to the young people, soar with your wings unclipped. You can achieve your life goals. Be mindful that though you are not better than anyone, no one is better than you. Bliss was it in that dawn to be alive. To be young was very heaven. To our citizens, those of us who are poor or indigent and those who are unemployed, I want you to know that you are in my thoughts every day as my government seeks actively to improve your condition of life and living sustainably. I hear the voice of pain and anguish of all those who are economically disadvantaged. I know that we have made immense progress in reducing poverty and indigence, but there is so much more to be done in this regard and for livelihoods to be sustained. Thus the unveiling of the admirable Zero Hunger Project and the ramping up of allied programs for sustainable livelihoods. This war against poverty must resonate as a noise in our blood and echo in our bones. My dear Vincentians, as always at Independence, I have a few announcements to make. First, the 110 persons who are employed as temporary clerks, some of them for several years in the public service, will all be employed with permanent status from January 1st, 2017. This will provide them with the requisite job security and attendant benefits as public servants. Second, on the basis of the 2016 CSEC and CAPE examinations, 629 students who achieve the requisite standard will so shortly receive a cash grant of $500 each. So too would the students who pass the associate degree program at the required level at the community college. Third, on the basis of the 2016 CAPE examinations, our government has awarded 16 scholarships, exhibitions, and bursaries for university level study. Of these, eight are national scholarships, fully funded for five years of study. Five are national exhibitions, fully funded for three years of study. And three are bursaries valued at $60,000 each for three-year university programs. These awards cost in excess of $5 million in the aggregate. Additionally, for the 2017-2018 academic year, the government will grant tuition scholarships to deserving applicants for university study. Further, it will continue to finance the economic costs for all eligible students at the University of the West Indies. And the state-owned student loan company will continue to grant annually economically disadvantaged student loans 
amounting to in excess of $4 million to eligible and deserving applicants. All of this combined with other universities, university scholarships negotiated with friendly overseas governments and supportive institutions continue to place St. Vincent and the Grenadines on track to have one university graduate per household on average by the year 2030. I said to the students, give me ever better results and I will find the money for you to go to university. Fourth, the relevant authorities in government will shortly announce the 100 or so successful applicants in the aggregate for the coveted places for the new academic year in the registered nursing and nursing assistance programs. The students in the registered nursing program will continue to receive not only a free education, but also a monthly stipend of $1,000. I have been advised that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the only country in CARICOM with such a generous provision, a special initiative of our government. I want the nurses to know, I want the nursing assistants to know that you are very special to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and you are very special to Ralph. All these and other compelling initiatives for the youths, the elderly, the farmers, the working people will continue to be honored and implemented despite the economic challenges with which we are confronted. Fifth, in another week or two, after a review which is currently on the way is completed by the competent authorities, I intend to advise His Excellency the Governor General to order the release of some young men and women who are serving terms of imprisonment for relatively minor offenses. I consider that in all the circumstances that these young persons ought to be given a second chance. This is the internationally proclaimed year of mercy by people of faith and we ought to exercise it appropriately to these young persons and others. Six, the annual duty-free concession for Christmas barrels will commence on Monday, November the 14th, 2016 and run to December the 31st, 2016. Last year, there were some 18,000 such barrels. And seventh, shortly additional persons will be recruited for the police force, the fire station, and the Coast Guard. Eight, in recognition of those citizens at home and abroad who have made sterling contributions in the field of sports, culture, education, health, public service, business, and community service, we will give very special recognition. So early in the new year 2017, our government will announce the naming of various facilities in honor of our distinguished citizens, particularly those who have gone to the great beyond. We must remember them as part of our exercise of nation building and the further ennoblement of our Caribbean civilization. Announcements too will be made for a few more additional sporting and cultural ambassadors. And my last announcement today concerns Haiti. I have instructed the, the Director General of Finance and Planning to transfer an, initi an initial 50,000 US dollars to assist the Haitian government in its relief efforts consequent upon the recent devastation wrought by Hurricane Matthew. The Haitians are our Caribbean brothers and sisters whom we love dearly. They are in our prayers. Fellow Vincentians, within a few weeks, 
I will present to Parliament the estimates of revenue and expenditure for the year 2017. And thereafter, I will present my budget. I would like you to listen to what I have to say then for our continued programs and some new initiatives. Fellow Vincentians, as I conclude, I reiterate today that this day is one for reflection of ourselves and our history. To think carefully about our past, our present, and our future, which of all time is the only time that it is ours to desecrate. We must truly get to know ourselves better and to know our history more, to listen more to our parents and grandparents, to shape a whole son and a whole daughter out of the compromises which history and contemporary circumstances have made us. In this process, renewals and rebirths are not only possible, but necessary and desirable. As we learn from our past, we must, we must not remain stuck in it. We take the present as we find it and make our future better from all our possibilities and strengths, despite our limitations and weaknesses. We must discern truth from facts and let the real world validate the truth. We must not merely build monuments to the right excellent Joseph Chateauier, our extraordinary national hero, and other exceptional personalities in our patrimony. Their heroic deeds and teachings are better remembered, not in marble or stone or bronze, but in the hearts and minds of all of us, recognizing always that despite the greatness of all these men and women who have gone before us, that they were mortals with limitations and weaknesses. And so today, we renew individually and collectively our quest to uplift ourselves and our nation further. It is our duty to act in furtherance of this noble quest. Happy 37th anniversary, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you and have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless.